Hi, my name is Raphael van Kempen. I'm from the Institute of Automotive Engineering at RWTH Aachen University. Together with my colleagues Bastian Lampel, Timo Wopen and Lutz Eckstein, I developed a simulation-based end-to-end learning framework for evidential occupancy grid mapping, which I will present in the next minutes. A key aspect of our methodology is that our neural network is trained with synthetic data only, such that good generalization to real-world data can be achieved. In the end of the presentation, I will demonstrate the results of our methodology in the complex real urban environment. Let me first introduce a problem statement. Today's prototypes of automated vehicles often use LiDAR sensors in addition to cameras and mostly also radar sensors to perceive their environment. While cameras are quite helpful with providing semantic information of the environment and radars allow to determine the speed of other traffic participants, a LiDAR sensor scan provides 3D locations of elements in the environment that provide reflection points, with highest accuracy even at night. You can see such one LiDAR point cloud in the image that was recorded in a quite complex urban environment, showing several other cars, pedestrians, traffic signs and other obstacles. Other traffic participants are often represented as bounding boxes and object lists that are used to predict their future behavior and to plan the maneuver of the automated vehicles. Unfortunately, in a real-world environment, a lot of different object classes may occur that need to be considered in the driving task. If these objects are not contained in the labels of the dataset of the algorithm that creates the bounding boxes, they are difficult to be sufficiently detected. Also, it doesn't make sense to represent every obstacle type as a bounding box. To handle that, occupancy grid maps have often been used. They divide the vehicle's environment into discrete cells containing occupancy information. We decided to use evidential OGMs, in which each cell contains two belief masses, representing evidence for the cell being occupied or free. Thus, it is possible to model uncertainty in occluded areas and conflicting evidence. Our goal was to create a deep learning based algorithm that predicts such grid maps from LiDAR point clouds in one shot. We called that algorithm EVILOG, which stands for Evidential LiDAR Occupancy Grid Mapping. Three major goals motivated our research. State of the art occupancy grid mapping algorithms often rely on handcrafted geometric inverse sensor models that interpret the LiDAR point cloud for example by marking all cells with reflections in a specific height as occupied and the space between sensor and reflection as free. This does not work well in dynamic situations, for instance if the car is rolling or pitching due to acceleration or making a turn. Additionally, only a quite sparse occupancy grid map can be created in one step of such algorithm, which makes it necessary to track the grid map over time to get a denser representation. This is difficult in a dynamic environment and was solved, for instance, by using a particle filter, estimating the cell's dynamic state in previous approaches. Our goal was to create a deep learning-based inverse sensor model that predicts a dense occupancy grid map in one shot, while taking occlusions and uncertainty into account. This is why we decided to create evidential grid maps. It was our expectation that such deep inverse sensor model would be able to infer some more information from the reflection point and the point cloud. In particular, we wanted the algorithm to mark all cells that are covered by other traffic participants instead of only the cells containing reflection points. Finally, as this is a major challenge for all supervised learning tasks and this type of data representation would be especially hard to label by hand, we wanted to rely on synthetic data that was generated using a simulation software only. We wanted to answer the research questions How well does a deep convolutional neural network that is based on our methodology perform when predicting dense OGMs from LiDAR measurements? Is it capable of capturing the epistemic uncertainty for cells where no reflection point is located? And how well does this network perform when presented with real-world sensor data? To generate synthetic training data, we use the simulation software Virtual Test Drive. It offers an advanced LiDAR sensor plugin that uses ray tracing and physically based rendering that means it considers material properties, such as their reflectivity, to create more realistic synthetic LiDAR measurements. 
Use the car model and the LiDAR setup that is similar to one of our research vehicles that uses a Velodyne VLP32 sensor type with 32 vertical layers. To create the ground truth occupancy grid maps, we equipped the simulated vehicle with another virtual LiDAR sensor that has the same field of view as the Velodyne but uses 3000 vertical layers. From information on the material class that caused the reflection, we are able to distinguish free from occupied areas in the grid map. Additionally, we use bounding boxes from simulated traffic participants that are hit by a minimum of 50 LiDAR reflections to mark the whole space covered by them as occupied in the grid map. With this, we chose an urban world model and generated 10 scenarios which are randomly populated with several other traffic participants from a large catalogue of vehicle types to generate 10,000 training samples. Another scenario was used to generate 1,000 validation samples and a test dataset with 100 samples was generated from a scenario that is located in another part of the simulated town. We based our work on the popular point pillars network architecture, which performs quite well for object detection and LiDAR measurements. As proposed, the point cloud is converted into pillars by the pillar feature net, and a 2D CNN backbone converts it into a higher level representation. We added dropout layers to the backbone to prevent the network from overfitting to the synthetic training data. Instead of the original prediction heads, we added an evidential prediction head, which is a 2D convolutional layer with two channels, containing evidence for each cell being free or occupied. We use a loss function that is inspired from the work of Sen Loyadel, who proposed a loss function that trains the network to predict the parameters of a Dirichlet probability density function. Thus, the neural network quantifies first and second order uncertainty as it predicts a PDF over the probabilities of a cell being free or occupied and generates no evidence for unknown areas. After a training for 100 epochs with a batch size of 5, we evaluated the trained model on our test dataset and compared the results to a simple geometric approach that you can see in the middle of this image. The left image shows a top-down view of the input point cloud and the right image shows an occupancy grid map predicted by the trained network. Both OGMs are single-shot results, hence they are based on one LiDAR measurement only. The upper diagram shows the belief masses for a free, occupied and unknown cell state over the test scenario, while the lower diagram shows the color libra divergence of the estimated directly PDF from the true PDF. It is apparent in the video and in the upper diagram that the geometric ISM creates a considerably higher proportion of cells with an unknown state. Hence, fewer cells are classified as free or occupied. The lower diagram also shows that the deep ISM estimates the cell states better than the geometric ISM at any time. This video shows the performance of our model on real-world data that was recorded with one of our research vehicles in an urban area. The model still has some difficulties with elevation, as can be seen here when the vehicle drives into a bridge, which is understandable because there has been no elevation in our simulated scenarios. Also, there are some false positives occurring directly behind the vehicle that result from invalid reflection points that are caused by light arrays hitting the car's roof. But in general, obstacles and free space are recognized quite well, while also the space behind other cars is mostly classified correctly although there exist no reflection points in the point cloud at the location of these cells. Now we are approaching a more complex situation at a larger junction with several other cars, pedestrians, traffic signs and other obstacles. We can see some more uncertainty in the model's output if there is no vehicle driving in front, but no obstacle is missed. In particular, also, vulnerable road users like pedestrians and cyclists are detected correctly.
To sum up, we have shown that our presented methodology using synthetic data for training a deep neural network only performs better than a classical geometric approach when presented with synthetic data. Also, first and second order uncertainty of the cell states are estimated and the state of occluded cells behind vehicles is inferred. There are still some challenges to improve the generalization of the model to real-world data, but the results are already quite promising. We expect a better performance if the simulated scenarios would take place in a model of the actual static environment of the real-world test data, and a higher diversity of training data could also further improve the performance. This is relatively easy to achieve when using simulation data. If you would like to contribute to our approach, have a look at our GitHub page, where you will find all data and code that is necessary to reproduce the results I presented. Thank you very much.